Welcome to our podcast today. Champions are built. This is Coach EJ, the brand. This is Coach Aaron, the source. EJ. Today's my birthday. Six Happy years birthday. old. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I so, should know that. I should know that. Happy we're not going to do a, a birthday podcast. <laughs> it's not much to talk about. Right, right, right. But let's do... Let's do this one. We've got a list of them. And I think this is one that we might have a little fun with today. Okay. It's Let's call this the guru search. <laughs> okay. And what I mean by that is there tends to be this notion that, um, you know, everyone's looking for, you know, the the all-knowing, you know, all-seeing, all-answers guru right. uh, when it comes to their, you know, training, uh, coaching, that sort of thing. And I kind of just want to talk about that a little bit because uh, there's a lot of ways you can be misled. And... Uh, you can maybe you find your guru, but maybe you find your Jim Jones. Uh, right. <laughs> but yeah, let's talk about it. Do you want me to start? Or you want you want to start? Well, you know, I got a couple little little tidbits on the guru. You know, it's it's kind of funny. I think Aaron, it goes back to what we talked about years and for years and years. You know, everyone's trying to find someone that can help them. Yes. And it seems like they go to any extreme to do that and i've got a whole ideology about you know looking for your guru or whoever it is right. but it seems like you know if if one person doesn't work jump to the next person if that person doesn't work jump to this person and i think there's no r d you know about yeah. the guru and you know where's that guru from what have they done all kinds of things but I keep on seeing these guys kind of pop up on the internet via social media or they get a whole bunch of followers and yeah, this check this guy out. And sometimes I think the gurus are built because of how their social media page is built and how many likes they get. And that's the answer. So that's my initial thought about the guru because it, it takes on many forms and it has many layers why this person is like all of a sudden the newest and the best at what they do. Yeah, I, I would completely agree with you. And I'm I'm glad I let you start that off because you kind of put it in a nice, sane, uh, <laughs> palatable way to understand it. And, you know, I have a, a saying and it's, there's a difference between popular and good. Mm. And with again the advent of social media it's 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 very easy for you know these self-proclaimed or fan proclaimed gurus to be kind of put out there because again what do you do on the internet everyone puts their best foot forward you know so it, it's it's very easy to um to do that and if you as a consumer don't do your due diligence, then, you know, you can fall victim to some of the shenanigans of what some of these guys are doing. Case in point, have an athlete been with me now for about maybe going close to a year. Okay. I wrote that athlete a homework program, October of last year, speed program. Fast forward about, oh, two or three months ago. And during this whole time, I'm saying, hey, are you doing the homework? How's the homework coming? Da -da -da. And following up with them. Oh, coach, I'm doing the homework. Everything's fine. Everything. Okay. So fast forward about two or three months ago. He runs a 60. And it's not what we wanted. Come to find out. He stopped doing the homework and was doing an online program 
that he got. And now I said, okay, well, let's take a look at this program. You know, because I always reserve judgment. Right. And this is a program that cost twice as much as what my homework program cost. Actually, two and a half times as much. Okay. I go to the website. It's a baseball guy selling speed programs. Okay. <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> I, I check his bona fides. Because okay. that's what I do. Right. And the guy has, I think, been in business, at least online, for only about four years. I look at his videos. Right. There's nothing, you know, it's pretty generic. But okay. in his video, and this video is only two months old. Gotcha. Today, in this video, he freely admits that he has never looked at the technical side of speed development. He's only looked at the weightlifting side. And he proceeds to say, well, um, so I went to LSU to talk to their strength and conditioning coach to get speed tips. Now, this is a guy who's selling speed training. He doesn't have any background in speed training. Right. He's, a, I guess, a former baseball coach. But again, when you look at the website, most guys don't tell you what their, what their background is. They kind of just fluff over kind of what their experience is. Right. He readily admits he doesn't know anything about speed training on the technical side. He actually admits he's going, he goes to speak to another guy to, to, for speed training tips, but yet he's selling speed training programs. And my athlete bought that. And why did he buy it? Because the guy is posting videos of speed drills. Because <laughs> that's how you get faster, Aaron. <laughs> But to the trained eye, the athletes in his speed drills are all doing them incorrectly. <laughs> There's no correction, right? Yeah. And, and I'm just like, really? But this is the trap that athletes and parents fall into. Well, they got it. He's got a lot of views. He's got a lot of likes. But if you don't have the the expertise to really, or, or, or at least take the time to kind of dig into the bona fides of, of a so-called expert, then you probably deserve what you get. Right. And, and, and so, you know, that's kind of a long story, but it just illustrates what happens to a lot of people. And, you know, we've, we've done our, um, podcast about magic beans and it's the same kind of mentality where popularity people equate popularity with expertise and mm. that's not the case i would say hey if there's a guy who's doing a lot of stuff out there look under the hood just like you would anything else and say hey okay what's his pedigree how long have they been doing this does this make sense you know then you can connect the dots. You have to do a little bit of investigative work. If you want to, you know, throw your 250 bucks, 500 bucks at a program, hey, that's fine. But the thing that bothers me is we just killed about six or seven months of time. And now we're starting all over again. And it's like, who told you to put the bomb on? Well, now I'm Jackie. Now I'm Jackie Charles again. And I'm Jackie Charles again. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just oh, yeah, a couple, yeah. you know, a little story. But EJ, I'll, I'll hand it off to you, and then I've got a few more things that I I'd like to say too. Yeah, I, I, the popularity thing bothers me because, because that's great. He's popular. Everybody likes him. He does that. But 
at? Where is he at? Like, where are these people at? And what are they doing? Are they like at a nat national convention speaking to a thousand of, of coaches and the coaches saying, hey, this is this is the real thing? Or where's the awards behind what they've done? And what's where's the books and where's the movie that's being <laughs> made about <laughs> how good they are? And this is the next, where's the commercial on television or infomercial, you know, is it just an online presence that allows them to be popular and for people to not really do the research and just give them money. And, and it's a way of uh, them making a living. You know, I always go back to this is that your results speak for themselves, Aaron. Yeah. And you have players athletes that get where they need to be and you know you've had an impact on them that's your that's what you rest on man that's that's just what you rest on your your ability to get players where they need to be and i believe that i you know going out there and saying we've done this and i've done that and if you have to do that that's tell me one thing you're really not that good yeah. I'm sorry. That's just my opinion. If you have to go toot your horn that much and say, hey, this is what I've done. Look, I got this. Look at this and that. I mean, my goodness, that's um, people fall for that trap. And I tell athletes and parents all the time, don't believe what you see, the 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 facade, the instant first first look. The first look is not always the the end look. It's kind of like going out recruiting a player, Aaron. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm going out to watch a player, I want a player to come and play in our program. It's not one look. It might be two, three, and it might be like, okay, I'm not sure yet, but let me look again because there's something I might see there. There's no difference in when you go out and find your guru that you wouldn't take several looks or you wouldn't ask people or mm -hmm. you wouldn't check into it further because when I'm trying to get a player that is getting in our program, you know, it may be like, hey, he maybe he's not ready or maybe he's kind of ready, but I need to look some more. Or maybe this player is ready, but let me get another second and third look. Yeah. And, it, 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 and there's nothing wrong with that. But I, again, I, I don't quite understand how how people can just say, I like this guy. He did this good with this one person. That's my guy. And he's got this. <laughs> okay. It goes back to your story. Yeah. You know, what happened? Nothing, nothing. The player's back to square one. I mean, why do you want to go back to square one? You wasted so much time when you could have been on a kind of like this marathon where you're just saying, hey, piece by piece, step by step. You know, you've got to walk, you've got to jog, you got to run, you have to sprint. Kind right. of so no, that's yeah. my there, there's no shortcuts. And I think that's also part of the problem, too, is um, athletes are looking for quick fixes. They're looking for formulas. And there's a lot of different ways to get to where you want to be. I'll be the first one to say that. Right. So but. You also you can't be Charlie Brown searching for the great pumpkin you know and and i think you just have to source what's in your area and what makes sense so in other words you know maybe this is how i would go about finding an expert and this is kind of what i do with anything whether i'm looking right. for a carpenter or i'm looking for a plumber a doctor your your first and your strongest inclination is going to be a personal referral Yes. Somebody who you know and whose judgment you trust. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not some parent blabbing in the sand in the stands, you know, but someone whose judgment you trust that says, hey, you know what? We use this guy. This was our experience. Right. Okay. And you may want to get, you know, two or three of those sorts of referrals. Absolutely. The second thing is, Take the time to do a little investigation. Obviously, the first thing is you pull up their website. Mm -hmm. but there's certain signs that you want to look for on a website. One, look to see how long their website's been up. 
Okay, because sometimes that's an indication of how long they've been in business. The other thing is go through their website and and look for specifics. And in other words, hey, I played Major League Baseball for X amount of years. Mm -hmm. I coached at this level, this level, this institution, this institution, this, this institution. Um. These are some of my marquee athletes. Okay. Um, you know, here are some testimonials from some of the parents. Right. You know, but when you're looking at the, you know, things online, you got to always take them with a grain of salt and you always got to connect the dots. In other words, you know, there's, there's a lot of vague proclamations out there. You know, I've trained over 300 D1 athletes. Well, you're 27 years old and <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and your website is, is uh, three years old. Right. Well, right. you got to do the math or, or, you know, I, you know, I've been doing this for, you know, 15 years. Right. And you're 30 years old. You know, so, so sometimes these guys just tell them themselves. So it, just by doing some, just kind of reading between the lines and looking at, hey, what are they saying? And is there a consistency with their bona fides, their proclamations expertise, of expertise, and does it match? If not, that might be a sign that, because again, people are putting their best foot forward and they're embellishing. OK, now I'll admit my my site, I don't put athletes names up anymore because I've been doing it 30 years. And I just if yeah. I was list every athlete, you know, it, it, it's just not uh, yeah. something that I that I do. But. Um, maybe you're talking about posting the athletes, you've got to take that also with a grain of salt, mm -hmm. because sometimes the dirty little secret of trainers is ex superstar athlete comes to their gym. Maybe they're in town for a period of time, or maybe they're a friend of someone who's working out at the gym. Right. And they work out for a week. Maybe they work out for a day. Trainer takes a picture of them, posts it on the website. <laughs> hey, so and so, you know, works out at my thing. So, the truth is they probably may have been there a day or maybe they just took a picture with them. And a lot of guys just do that. And, but the innuendo is, Oh, Bryce Harper is working out at such and such. Do you see what I'm saying? Absolutely. And, and so sometimes just by kind of telling a little, there's a little grain of truth in something doesn't necessarily make it factual, you know, mm -hmm. not in terms of, the what you're trying what they're communicating and implying right so you've also got to be careful and again you know if this is a guy who's maybe been in the business three or four years he's got five years of experience you know is bryce harper really going to this guy <laughs> right bryce harper's good earlier you, you know what i'm saying absolutely and and, and so again you've got to kind of parse some of this stuff you, you got to be careful and and so that's what I'm saying. Um, right. But I'll, I'll hand it off to you, and then I've, I've got some other uh, things yeah. I also want to talk about. Yeah, I, I you know, Aaron, I think I think the thing that uh, you know hits me in the heart sometimes is people pro proclaiming that they're an expert at something, and I just wonder sometimes um, who gave them that credential to be the expert. Mm -hmm. uh, I I I I really find it hard that why do people invest funds into somebody or someone who proclaim they're an expert, but who gave them that, and where did that come from? And that's why when you said this, and this really resonated with me, is open the hood. Yeah, go go find out where those spark plugs are, where all that wiring went and who did they really train or work with that's legitimate? Because if they worked with that person, wouldn't you think 
that that person would have gave them a testimonial on their website. Yeah. And would have said, this person is this good. Hey, right. here we go. Instead of just posting a video, I work with that person, yeah. but there's no relationship. Yeah. Like, hey, listen, such and such is credible. And this is why they helped me do this in my career. And right. I'll tell you why they did it and how they did it. And this is what makes them special. And this is why you should train or work out or whatever you want to say with them. Right. Versus, yeah. I like so-and-so. He's the best. Bryce yeah. Hart, I was like, okay, really? Let The testimonials should tell a story. And when you see testimonials that tell a story, then you know it's, it's factual. In most cases. Now, again, I guess with AI bots and all that nowadays. Oh, right. Anything can be said, right? Right. And also understand there are a lot of great coaches that you'll never hear of. Yes. Absolutely. And doing a lot of good work with a lot of athletes that you'll never hear of. So mm -hmm. don't go star chasing your, your, your guru. Find a guy who gets good testimonials from everyday athletes because your kid's not Bryce Harper kids not LeBron James you know maybe one day they will be but they're not right now and and so you know that comes that comes another thing because mine is you know there's levels of degrees of expertise okay and I define expertise as time in knowledge and results. Mm. <laughs> Those are the things that you need to be able to look at when someone says they're an expert. Okay. Um, and, and so for a younger athlete, you may not need to find the guru and spend 150 bucks a session. All you might need is a, a you know, a solid coach that has four or five years experience that can teach them the basics and meet them where they're at. Right. And so, you know, understand what level of expertise you're engaging your, your athlete is at and what they need, and then find the appropriate coach for that. But there's no need for overkill. So that would one thing be one thing. And the other thing that I would say when looking at, at at coaches or gurus, and this might be a little bit harder to do because again, you know, people can kind of fudge their numbers, but you know, a, and you can kind of determine this by, you know, years in, but you know, what's their sample size, you know, of, of athletes that they've worked with. And you can kind of extrapolate that by, you know, again, years of experience. And you got to be careful when people talk about years of experience, right? Because there's a lot of part-time work going on in this business. Mm. So there's a difference between doing this for 15 years as a side gig and doing this for 15 years as your full-time mode of making a living in employment. There's a, you're, you're, you're um, engaged in it a lot differently than kind of what I call shade tree coaching, you know? Shade tree, I love that. And so, yeah, you can be a shade tree coach for 20 years, but it doesn't mean you have 20 years of experience. So there's a lot of that going on. And coaching and training are two different things. People say, well, I've been training athletes for years. Well, while really I was a high school coach for it. It's like, well, you're not, again, so the semantics, how people can use, you know, change, change the wording can imply something else. So those are just some things that I think parents should look at. Um, and lastly, I'd say, you know, are the things on their website more rah-rah or raw facts? The raw truth. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Even better. <laughs> so this is just kind of a, a light topic, but yeah. something that I, I think parents kind of should give at least some thought about when they're when they're trying to find somebody or ready to jump on the bandwagon of the next 
you know, the next good thing or great thing. Right. And, um, right. You know, I don't know. What else you got to say? I think a great, important topic today. And it's, you know, though you may classify it as light, I classify it as uh, kind of really important to find the right person that can help get you in the right direction. And you broke it down in a very fundamental way. You said, you know, getting some fundamentals, meeting your athlete where they're at. So for me, Aaron, you know, hey, important because it can lay a foundation to where your athlete needs to go. So that's that's my final note on on today, man. My final note. With that said, hey, look for your guru. This is Coach EJ, the brand. And I'll say, don't look for your guru. And remember those immortal words of Flavor Flay. Don't believe the hype. <laughs> this is Aaron Thigpen, the source. We'll see.